I go there to scream at the moon, like a wolf. It is very important to me. I'm a writer. I'm a singer. But above all, I see myself as a wolf in wilderness. I was invited last year to do an installation inside of the Shenzhen Airport. Shenzhen Airport is the single most advanced, most beautiful designed, and commercially successful airport in China. As it was celebrating its first year's anniversary, I was invited to do a project. Then I thought, what do I do? I would like to bomb the airport. And I did. The basic question is, I am a painter. So how does a painting perform its maker? And here it is. In all of performances, the single most important expression to me is the quality of its painting. And when this painting blocks the entrance for all passengers after the bombing has happened, I stood there. And so did everyone else. What does it mean? This is oil mixed with ink. The anti-performance performance happens in the resistance. Helicopter could dance making all kinds of gestures. But in this case, it only resisted its dance using only the altitude, the wind, and gravity. I was sitting above there. I was doing the actual dropping of the ink bomb myself with my body half hanging outside of the helicopter. God, it was hard to aim at the painting. You see the variation in altitude, in height. Mm. 
hold still. This is the most transparent, determined, yet straightforward expression of gravity. And the velocity. And this, uh, this airport celebrates the darkest light. And now, a different light, the green light. This is a operatic performance lasting 12 hours, coping with transformative bodies. This is the body of ink. The body of light, the body of a cause, and you see the same kind of body saying to each other, "This is the body of image." So that operatic performance went through the entire night, occupying the center of the city hall. The question becomes: became where? did the notion of wilderness begin? Are we really in the center of the city? Or are we in the center void of the universe? This series describes the unseen, the unknown, as act. While I was painting each of them, they function as dust so fine that I cannot see them myself. When you use them, you need to use magnifying glasses. And this is a fairy of heart. In that heart, it's a man's heart. You see the breast of a woman. The lines describe the movement of water. While I was painting, they're actually invisible to me. It's 34 centimeter by 34 centimeter, so it's this tiny. Now, even when they're so large on screen, it is still hardly visible, the variation between the finance of each touch and each stroke. Fairy of crystal. Imagine a piece of crystal splashed as a drop of water. Fairy of a season. You see spring, summer, autumn, and winter in one leaf. Painting thus becomes the bridge between what we can see and what we can touch. What if you are the painter, but you're completely blinded because of the control you wish to accomplish? Your pupil is dancing in the crowd. LSD, whoever has had experience with it. Shadows. 
Each series consists of a hundred of them. Their still lives, unseen. Their poetry, unread. Their writing, unknown. And now luminaries. They are the entire universe consisted of poetry, made up characters sometimes, and creatures shining. But then again, they might be still here. They're still invisible. White, pink, violet, blue, we can all see them, but they're pure. And now this one is about touch and silence. As I cruise through the world, each project is about weather, climate, biology, and the impossibly invisible transformation amongst them. This painting was made during four years of close examination of weather and now the earthquake. <laughs> all languages borrowed from the Song Dynasty, all stories from ancient literature. <coughs> this is a crack in the sky made of bones. And the entire earthquake is perceived as a fossil. All these waters and mountains, they melt into each other. And this mountain is made of human skulls and skeletons and faces of ghosts. And the ghosts are in us. <coughs> and this grave literally was filled with 10,000 people dead. Here performance is seen as the dream walk the notion of the dream walk as the journey of the creative painter was dated to, again, Yuan Dynasty and Song Dynasty by Zongbing. But the truth story is, the first year while I was there, everybody still knew there was a grave burying 10,000 people in Wenchuan. Four years later, the grave is gone, the story is gone. Now they only exist in the painting. So what is the performance in this? Can you really perform in your dream? And what if what we believe as journalistic description of the world never quite existed? Or simply, people did not want it to exist? So to go back to the birth of our understanding of the world. Each of the detail functioning as collateral activity of dust and particles. <coughs> what performs us? Is it our belief? It is the poetry that was born in us? Or perhaps is the impossible answers that we carry every single day in every moment, thinking that poetry, performance, mystery, they're all just in us. Thank you.
Thank you, Lisa, for the invitation. And uh, I want to read a letter uh, that my mom wrote in Albanian, but I translate it. Uh, okay. Uh, Sisley uh, was a very quiet and nice child. He has always been in good behavior and followed all the rules at home and at school. He was on time every night for, for a bed, and his teeth are, are as white as the snow. <laughs> he played nicely the piano and flute. On the weekends, we took him out horse riding before his Boy Scouts activities. He also showed a great interest in the French language. Sisley has always been very helpful to others. Uh, while his friends went to play outside after the school, Sisley decided to donate his after school time to help the elderly people with their household duties. His annual treat was to always go in skiing in the winter with his parents and siblings, mother. Thank you. OK. And today I'm going to introduce an artist to everyone. I was only able to find a small amount of information about the artist in question. Unfortunately, even though the materials that I have found are somewhat vague, but they do provide an outline of the artist. And I think that history tends to be like that sometimes. It fills us with anticipation, making us excited to unearth the past. Often we're anxious to get hold of the effects that are waiting to be brought to light. The artist was born in 1956 and dropped out of the Sichuan Fine Arts Institute in the 1980s. This information on the artist's life is all that I have been able to find in the official records. Starting in the early 1980s, he created many experimental works and he tried to make a breakthrough during the infancy of modern Chinese art. Like so many other Chinese artists of that generation, I found a copy of Fine Arts in China published during that period, in which one passage gives him the following appraisal. This artist has engaged himself in fears revolt against the politicization, instrumentalization, and practical application of art. As Chinese art circle in urge innovation, the new artistic ideas an art form that he advocates appear valuable. Nevertheless, it was very difficult to find any other materials that related to him. Oh, what's this? I would like to begin by talking about the year of his birth. 1956 was a watershed year in the history of art. In the year Jackson Pollock died, German held the first documenta. Iconic minimalist artist Ka Andre took to the street to conduct politic demonstrations. Daniel Brand joined the Situationist movement in France, and Jasper Jones moved to New York, where he met Michel Duchamp, who he introduced to John Cage. In the United States, a completed new era of transformation just has begun. In fact, the year from 1956 to 1968 were a progress progressive period in the Western art in which art theory advanced from expressionism and turns media into an objective material. This forced many artists to move on a form, <coughs> a re revolution that had concerned itself with brush strokes and to go out into their surroundings, where they formed what was to become the land art movement, and so, and the point in the time, the holy place of art in art history had already become a thing of the past. Then came performance art and the arrival of the video art, which developed it from efforts to record the new form, the dazzle of those years. 
that constituted this period of history essentially saw traditional easel painting wiped out. The reason that I have to talk so much about this period is this. I believe that to truly understand the artist, to know his art, and to understand his creative thread, we must carry out research into the period that nourished or even destroyed that artist. We all familiar with the first STARS exhibition, an unorthodox exhibition held in Beijing in September 1979 by the STARS group, who hung their artworks on the fence outside of the National Art Gallery. In a sense, the mainland's contemporary art movement began with that iconic exhibition. I believe that everyone presented here today is familiar with that event. It is entirely possible that you are better acquainted with that period of history than I am myself. Sometimes later, I found a document from the period in the Library of National Art Gallery in Beijing. The document gives a detailed account of the event from beginning to end. After examining it, I found this description in the text. One artist, not far from the fence, was presenting his work. He had painted a self-portrait from the same point of view as the 1629 self-portrait by Dutch painter Rembrandt. He was just like Rembrandt then. Both were 23 years old when the portraits were made. An age of emotional creativity, stand on two bricks. He held the portrait up in his hands and explained his work to the people coming in and going around him. That description sounds similar to the artist's work that I'm introducing to, to today. If the artist hadn't adequately prepared the conditions necessary for the audience to accept his work, the work would have been diluted and lost in such an open environment. Moreover, his work was considered frivolous, dull, and even somewhat contrived by contemporary standard of judgment. It was of no interest in terms of Bohemia resistance to society at that time, nor did it try inquire into the rationality of classic culture. It is not hard to see why it attracted such little attention. It is important to know that imitating Rembrandt was a kind of grand work at that time, but many artists hide themselves behind this kind of the foundations because of the self-doubt. This kind of the loneliness that comes from an acceptance is a fundamental question that we also have to face today. How do we with our history? After researching these projects, which caused a, a problem at that time, I found a statement of the artists, of the artists explaining his own work. I purged myself of the art education that I had received and communicated directly with the audience in order to achieve purity in my art. From a modern day perspective, his explanation is somewhat ambitious, even baffling. While I was researching the artist, I was found this statement in which Huang Zhuan judged the cultural production system of that time. It is difficult for someone who lacks in basic philosophical competence and is unfamiliar with philosophical vocabularies to become a central feature in the art movement. His evaluation, which does not tell the whole story, cannot be fairly applied to anyone. But sometimes history is just like that. Through my research, I was led to exploring an ever wider range of art history. From my point of view, his work was bound to be ignored because of the prevailing artistic standards of the period, whether they were official standards or the underground standards. The artist created another piece of work in 1981 in which he used the blunt to cut a 20 centimeter long scar on his arm. During the time that it took for the scar to heal, he did not engage in any other creative works. That work reminds me of Yves Klein. Klein created a work in 1959 that breathed new life into art history. His gallery would not pay him, and he became anxious and found, and found a collector. 
He told the collectors that he would sell all his paintings to him, and that he would never create another of his blue paintings. What did he want in return? He wanted one cube centimeter of gold. He made an appointment to meet the collector on the bank of the Seine. Before the meeting, he wrote out a plan by hand and gave it to the collector when they met. The collector gave the artist the cube of gold, one centimeter in size. After the collector read the plan, he immediately burned it and clay and threw the tiny cube of gold into the river. To our knowledge, it was the first work of conceptual art. If we can say that Duchamp was the resources of language for many artists, then if Clay, a genius who only lived of the age of 34, expanded these sources of language to cover a broader scope. Let us back again to consider the artist that I'm introduced to you today. In 1982, his experiences in France while on a brief trip to study abroad were recorded by a member of staff working at the Pompidou Center at that time. The member on the staff who worked in the library wrote about the artist in his diary. A Chinese artist in the place de la Bastille was filming a blue balloon slowly drifting upwards and disappearing into the sky with a Panasonic M7 video camera in his hand. Of course, that recording no longer exists. It is worth mentioning that the Panasonic M7 video camera that he was using was the same as the equipment used to record John Paley's famous video in 1988. His story is filled with dark clouds. The kind of mark that a work of art makes on art history depends on its dismission and influence, but the influence is uncertain. It is, can be very difficult to gauge. During that period, Chinese artists were hit by the final impact of Western modernism. I have to mention Dada. An important branch of Dadaism was dedicated to chaos and agitation. The Dadaists wrote in their manifest the type of creation that we need advanced briefly, stopping at nothing. It is brief and practical. It will never be understood because logic is false and morality is always evil. The famous manifesto shows us an affirmation of the artist's self acquainting by this brand of modernism. In fact, from Duchamp's reading made to the artwork of that time, which overwhelmingly dedicated facts, we can see the motivation to intervene in social reality by challenging the, con the conventional order. They were the same as the majority of the works that we saw in the Star Exhibition. They used a variety of startling methods to challenge the root and popular culture of that time. This is a work that I would like to describe to you all a little bit today. Very little information is marked on the VHS tape itself. From the little that remains on the tape, I found it very difficult to find out any more information about it, such as its edition, duration, or age. So it has constantly made me thinking about how I approach my own past works and how I rely on the same form of processes of a new media is born. Because in itself, it seems to be waiting to be updated at any moment. Let's go back to continue talk about the Dadaism. Any researches that carries out even slightly bit of research into Dadaism up come up with a different approach. Drawing a thread from Gauguin to Van Gogh and then to Baudelaire that classifies as Western canon. There are an even more similarities between this and the artists that I'm presenting to you today. I am sure that all of the specialists and scholars here today are familiar with that followed. The period of linear history later when, went on to become the 85 new wave. It is no exaggeration to say that that generation's exploration of artistic language originated in a form of imitation. The structure of Chinese society at the time did not generate such creativity out of the thin air. 
We can use a similar approach to untangle another period of history. Cubanism separated East from France to Italy, where it formed a futurism. It also continued further East to Russia, where it became supermodism under the influence of Kandinsky and Malevich. As communism was trying to resolve it to eliminate the bourgeoisie and the town, prevailing minimalist tastes in Russia seemed to want to tear bourgeois tastes to peace. In fact, Soviet artists were forced to choose a kind of escapist version. In this sense, politics are always more powerful, creative version, maybe the most. In fact, I could use any kind of the literary narrative to write a conclusion for these works of the artist. But the few pieces that remains of his artistic heritage show us side of the generation of artists. That is what this industry is like. It brazenly concerns itself with glory, profit, and success. You cannot get around it. Nonetheless, nobody wants to be get ignored, and no, everybody is suffering from unrelenting anxiety, waiting to be discovered, acknowledged, and accepted, or perhaps to be rediscovered re-acknowledged or re-accepted. The artist made his last documented work in 1986. According to a description of the work, he sang a song that was a hit in the 1980s in a passageway not far from the Pantheon in Paris. Nobody will remember what the song exactly goes like. Thanks. is less about the brain and thoughts and information here and something that can be experienced more viscerally. Um, uh, I'm interested in making work that is, um, deals with art history and um, concept and idea, but also can have soul in it and heart um, and also be accessible. Uh, I oftentimes in, in these sort of conversations, um, I definitely feel like the outsider artist where I get lost a little bit in too much theory. Um, and sometimes it's just like the simplicity of being in the present moment connected to your, yourself, aware of your own heart, your own presence, your own existence. Um, and how looking at a picture can channel that. Um, a lot of these ideas have been um, already explored you know, in painting. I mean, stuff happening in the 30s and 40s with all the Abex guys was you know, these meditative states when you look up to a painting of Barnett Newman, these sort of things. I believe in the power of painting um, in moving paint and in, in, in its like, sort of simplistic element. Um, although very challenging, so I'm thinking about how, how really can this be done? Oh, that's it, I put my little 15 minute timer on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Um, we had some time, this went very, very short. So. Yeah, that went, that went. <laughs> so that went fast. Uh, yeah, I got a few more pictures I can show you. Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, I'm interested in you know, images that are very optical. Um, it completely draws from art history, um, yet I'm trying to recompose it in a way that feels current and fresh, feels, the feeling of it, the, the, the look and feel. Um, so the work is richly layered. It depends a lot on light. Um, these look very, very different in person. Uh, I, I'm using uh, newer materials, a lot of automotive paint, other industrial materials that have incredible uh, richness of color and light. Um, trying to use as much sophisticated masking and, and these sort of techniques, drawing with exacto blades, uh, chrome and reflective things. Um, but ultimately it's, it's, you know, to create an experience that there's, it's literal visual intensity um, between you and the viewer, um, I mean between the, the painting and the viewer in the moment. Um, and it still has the element of, of, of the movement um, and directness. 
Uh, I don't know. I realize that looking at pictures like this, you know, I have maybe seconds and maybe a few minutes to have someone's attention. I mean, that's really all the amount of time people spend looking at, at things before they move on to the next thing or what, what have you. So I feel like the information, what happens, it needs to, it needs to work quickly. Um, but um, ultimately, it's something that you look at, it, it uh, you know, it can have different appearances and perspectives. Um, and I feel like that is somewhat reflective of just my life as an adoptee, as a person of color, but you know, growing up very white, but also around very much uh, the African American collective and urban culture uh, and this sort of thing. So um, a lot of the sort of imagery I try to make, um, things go forward, they go back, they appear like they're in the back, but they're actually on top and this sort of thing, constantly moving. Um, you know, and that's sort of like these ideas of you know uh, how things are never as they appear to be, um, and how looking closer always reveals to uh, something more, something more profound. Uh, so yeah, this is all relatively recent work. This is uh, acrylic automotive paint um, panel. So I think you, you know, there's the action of the painting in it, the gesture. Um, the vocabulary is definitely like full body movement. It's, you know, it's Jackson Pollock, it's on the floor, um, mixed in with, you know, what can also feel uh, digital. <coughs> um, I definitely like the sort of optical effects, things, um, that like Bridget Riley, artists like this started um, like in the 60s and 70s. A lot going on, a lot of layers. And that's like a detail of the previous one. So yeah, the imagery, you know, I, I hope it, 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 you know, has a richness and a depth in it that can tap into something deeper in the viewer. Um, and vibrate something that's, you know, above the day-to-day -day mundane experiences that we go through. So, um, and it's about looking and perceiving and uh, looking deeper. So, that's it. Thank you.
It's forbidden to eat pork! You must be baptized to be a Christian! The Sabbath is holy. It's forbidden to slaughter a cow. as a Muslim and die as a Muslim. You're born as a Christian and die as a Christian. You're born as a Jew and die as a Jew. On 
honor your mother wife. Honor your mother earth and your wife. It's forbidden to kill! It's forbidden to commit suicide! It's forbidden to be homosexual! It's forbidden to make sex with animals! <coughs> you shall not work on Friday! You shall eat fish on Friday. You have pray five times a day. You have to marry as a virgin. As a woman is forbidden during her period to play. Don't touch a woman during her period. You will get unclean. You must be tolerant. <laughs> 